All right, YouTube, once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart for the podcast Talking Auburn Football. Uh, the recap after Auburn takes on Florida. In the swamp for homecoming for the Florida Gators, a very, very uh, interestingly weird football game. Uh, Florida actually winning that one 24 to 13. Pretty much uh, about all the improbabilities that you can expect in a very peculiar football game where Auburn and Florida tied for four turnovers apiece, uh, all of which were costly uh, for both teams. As a matter of fact, helped to manage to keep both teams in the football game as Auburn and Florida were literally in a stalemate up until the final quarter. One of the keys to this particular football game, in my opinion, was just the errant play of Bo Nix. Really couldn't get uh, a rhythm going, really uh, lost, I think lost trust in his offensive line early in the game, unnecessarily, again, uh, allowed himself to get a little bit rattled. Uh, the crowd noise seemed to be a, a pretty huge factor uh, in some of uh, the errant waves of this, of, of this particular football game. You're talking Bo Nix, uh, 11 for 27, through for three interceptions. And two of those, if I remember correctly, were, ac were actually in the red zone. Very costly interceptions, uh, very costly uh, because instead of, say, you know, the opportunity to get seven points or even three, you come away with nothing. And then, you know, Florida starts to, you know, cre continue to create more momentum, uh, continue to wear on the defense and thus and so. Another huge thing, I think, for the Auburn Tigers, especially on defense, as well as they played. Um, still susceptible, still prone to give up the big play. If you think about between LaMichael Pirine and Freddie Swain, Freddie Swain uh, hit Auburn for a 64-yard uh, pass reception on kind of a busted coverage. Looked like some uh, a, a nice mis mismatch uh, created by he and Mike linebacker uh, K.J. Britt for 64 yards. And then on a brilliant play, I just I still think this was the most brilliant play. Well, of the Dan game. Mullen really set up kind of a I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh basketball where you create a like isolation play that creates a one on one situation, usually a mismatch between say a guard and a forward or somebody that you feel like you can beat. I think this was a brilliant play because, you know, M Dan Mullen had everything going to the left to create a personnel mismatch. Um, to the right, to the left side of the defense, uh, had everything going, um, you know, had, had everything looking like it was going to the left side of the football field. Then <clears throat> in an ISO delayed type play gives the ball to the Michael Piron to where he had two one-on-one -on -one matchups, one with KJ Britt who missed the tackle and then another with smoke Monday. So really it was LaMichael Piron against two guys versus LaMichael Piron against the, you know, interior defensive line and the linebackers. It basically spread LaMichael Piron out, giving him an opportunity to make a play one on one. And he cashed in on that for 88 yards. But if you think about the combination of Freddie Swain and LaMichael Piron, you're talking about 160 plus yards on two plays. And considering the totality of that, 398 total yards for the Florida Gators. That was 38% of Florida's offensive production on two plays. Proved to be very costly uh, for the Auburn Tigers. Now, what does Auburn have ahead? Well, you got a bye week coming up this week, 5-1 and one in the SEC. Uh, undefeated, actually, in SEC West play. So that, that means Auburn basically still controls its own destiny with Arkansas ahead, Ole Miss ahead. Definitely the the big game in a couple of weeks against LSU uh, will go a long way in determining the ultimate fate of Auburn, whether Auburn could be looking at, say, a run for the SEC West or competing for an uh, opportunity to play in a New Year's Six uh, Bowl. So I think Auburn definitely has, you know, everything still ahead of them. Uh, just a tough loss. You know, I, I just think a very, very tough loss, a tough game for both teams. It appears that you know, both teams kind of got out of the game uh, mostly uh, uninjured, which is a good thing for both of these teams going down the stretch. Of obviously, both in the exact same situation. The only difference is uh, Auburn has a loss. Florida doesn't. Uh, but, you know, Florida has a tough stretch ahead as well. You're talking LSU, Georgia, 
uh, survived the first test against Auburn in a very, very sloppy manner. Four, four turnovers apiece. You know, that's something that both teams are going to have to uh, clean up. But a very, very brilliant day for uh, Dan Mullen to take what the Auburn defense gives him. My only disappointment in Gus is I just don't think he was patient enough. I don't think he, you know, trusted to continue to run the football to create some opportunities. He kind of he kind of got impatient in this particular football game. And, you know, Bo Nix definitely uh, didn't help the cause as well with the turnovers. But either way, Auburn has a lot ahead. Uh, look forward to continuing to cover uh, Auburn football got a long week, especially with it being a bye week. We get caught up on some recruiting news. Auburn definitely uh, needs to get a defensive end in this recruiting class really quickly. Once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast talking Auburn football. Go ahead and like this video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Auburn is now 5-1 and one after a mishap down in the swamp. Subscribe to the channel, and as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle.